Welcome to the video tour of the future site of CodeWell, the Laurelwood Academy property near Portland, Oregon. We'll be publishing more condensed highlight videos soon, but if you want the full walkthrough experience, then you've come to the right place. This first video will take us through the buildings we expect to be using in the first days and months of the project, and later videos will cover the buildings in need of renovation or remediation for future use, as well as the outdoor spaces and amenities that we couldn't shoot on this visit due to the weather. We'll start with Harmony Hall, the old girls' dorm, which has the main commercial kitchen and communal dining area, as well as 60 bedrooms, three smaller kitchens, eight bathrooms of various configurations, including a dozen showers and a couple of bathtubs, and various other functional spaces. The caretakers currently live in the attached house, so it won't be included on this walkthrough. From the rear parking area, there's wheelchair accessible access into the dining area and the ground floor of Harmony Hall. Eventually, we hope to extend the wheelchair access up to the first floor where there are more residential rooms. This food service area lets the kitchen serve buffet-style dishes so the people in the dining area can then serve themselves. This kitchen was previously used to feed as many as 100 people at a time and should have plenty of space for us to do our communal cooking. The dishwashing area is also very spacious. This is the walk-in refrigerator, which should more than serve our needs. I'll be fast-forwarding a little bit through some of the longer, slower segments of the video. There's a significant amount of pantry space here and elsewhere. The fire suppression system in this building has extra pumps to increase the pressure from the cistern up the hill. In addition to the walk-in fridge, there's a smaller walk-in freezer, which we'll also put to good use. We eventually expect to be serving 60 or more people in this dining room at once, but even during COVID-19 concerns, we could still have socially distanced dining with dozens of folks with proper ventilation. This area is wheelchair accessible and has the bathrooms for this floor of the building. This floor also has the main laundry area for the building. These next two rooms include a small auxiliary kitchen and some storage space. These were previously used as a wheelchair accessible apartment. We may return them to that use, or we may use this as an allergen-free or vegan kitchen. From here we'll proceed upstairs. This small hallway connects to the house that we're not going to get to see on this tour. Then we'll go to the three floors of dorm rooms. The next 15 minutes or so is a bit repetitive with some highlights in the middle. 
We're going to show all the rooms, which will help people pick their rooms when it comes time to move in for people who haven't seen the facility yet. It's also going to help us draw a more accurate floor plan because the records we have now are decades out of date. If you do decide to fast forward, watch out for the bathrooms, lobbies, apartments and adjoined rooms, and the additional kitchens upstairs. Most of the bedrooms do follow the same template with one or two beds, a sink, and one or two closets. But there are some exceptions. This is one of the few rooms with its own full bath. Here we have the first of the six residential floor bathrooms. Each one has two or three toilet stalls and two or three showers. In a future video you'll see the boys dorm which also has urinals, but you won't see those here because this was previously the girls dorm. And the historical gender segregation on the campus only gets more ridiculous from there. In addition to the stairwells at either end of the building, there's also a larger central stairwell which gives access to this lobby and a smaller one on the next floor. This was previously the front desk and office of the dorm for visitors, guests, and other functional use. This room was the gift shop on our previous visit, but it's been packed up since then. Behind the front desk, there are a few different adjoining rooms that were previously used as some sort of administrative office and control center. We may want to convert these into an apartment. They actually have their own kitchen, which would make this relatively unique among the spaces in this building. Now we're going to head up to the second floor of dorm rooms, which is very similar to the first. Major difference is the lobby and the office, but there are some minor differences as well.
This floor has much less lobby, but there is still some common space at the top of the central stairwell. Heading up to the top floor of dorm rooms, things are going to start to look a little different. The building's only half as wide, so there's only half as many rooms. Also, there's some extra kitchens up here and different shaped bedrooms. Here's a small laundry room in addition to the ones we saw on the ground floor. This is the first of the two kitchens on this floor. We may use these for allergens or dietary restrictions. We may use them for a pod that uses this floor. It's also possible that a group of residents using the adjacent rooms would want use of this kitchen. This is the very top of the central stairwell that went through the lobbies on the lower floors. Here we have an example of some rooms where the connecting wall has been torn down and made into one much larger space. This bathroom and the upcoming laundry room and kitchen are somewhat the mirror image of the ones we saw earlier on this floor. That's all for this building. Next we're headed to the administration building, which houses the theater in addition to a number of classrooms, offices, and other functional spaces. Entering from the rear, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Both floors have multiple of these large open spaces. Each one's about 20 by 30 feet with a large amount of natural light from the front or rear of the building. They each also have one or two adjoining office or storage spaces. These are where we'll have the majority of our events and activities that don't require a classroom. There was actually a second one of those large rooms that we just missed on the left. It's hard to make out, but this document storage room is actually the inside of a walk-in safe.
This was the mail sorting room with each of those small mailboxes accessible from the far side of the wall. And there are those mailboxes. This is the front entrance of the building, which is where visitors will be coming from the front parking when they arrive on site if they're not headed for one of the residential buildings. This floor has two restrooms, each of which has lockers and stalls. The second locker room and restroom is very similar to the first. This is actually not the main library, this is a secondary library. The main one's in another building that'll be in another video, but this one has more comfy furniture and will be more accessible. The previous use of the property was as a spiritual retreat. Although we'll be purchasing many of the furnishings and other items from other spaces, the items in this room were likely more meaningful to them and we'll go with them. Now we'll head up to the second floor. We're going to see another stairwell here, very similar to the one we came in through, but on the opposite side of the theater. This floor has more of the large open rooms. This particular one was set up for band practice, although we may change that or even set up other rooms in the same way. These were the administrative offices for the school when it was in operation. We'll likely use these for some sort of co-working or perhaps for some businesses being run by our members or one of our pods. Although our cameraman didn't walk through all of them, there's a small maze of 10 interconnected offices here that could also be used for co-working or on-site businesses. We expect these conversation pits to be one of the social focal points early on in the project. In addition to the comfy seating, there's also a nice view of the neighbors and some of the rest of the property. In addition to the comfy seating, this space also has the nicest piano on the property. That brings us to the theater. It previously sat 400, although the front rows of seats have been removed for floor activities by the previous owners. We'll see the rest of this floor before heading further upstairs. Moving up from the second floor, we're going to get to the balcony for the theater. There's some really nice woodwork in here and about a hundred seats, so we're hoping to keep this in good condition and use it when we use the theater. The very last climb in this building is up to the attic, which has the projection booth as well as some newly installed insulation by the previous owners and one of the furnaces for this building.
Next up is the gymnasium and some additional functional space in the same building. This wing of the building has 24 small and medium sized rooms that were originally used for music practice. We'll probably turn these into some sort of small project functional spaces. As we leave the music practice rooms, we're headed towards the stage with a quick stop for some plumbing. The main stage in the gymnasium is about 30 by 90 feet, has multiple rows of curtains as well as controls for the lights, and rooms full of pianos, organs, and other such instruments. The main gym floor is in pretty good shape for all the uses we're going to put it to. There's a little bit of dust, some scratches, and some water damage in one of the corners, so it's unlikely we'll need that space since we're probably not going to have two concurrent games of basketball going. Upstairs from the main gym floor, there's another 30 by 90 foot floor. This one's currently set up for shuffleboard. We'll probably do something more fitness oriented up here, perhaps a small gym. Below the balcony are the offices for the gymnasium as well as the locker rooms. We're going to see one of the locker rooms and it's sort of a maze so we're only going to see about half of it. This is where the roller skates were stored, back when kids would use the gymnasium as a roller skating rink. I think at this point we've seen about half of the pianos on the property.
This room was used for band practice, and we don't really have a plan for it yet. It's another contender to be the fitness space or gym or exercise room. Leaving the building, we're going to see more of the music practice rooms, which is a mirror image of what we saw at the entrance to this building. That's all for the gymnasium. Next up is the Industrial Arts Building. On the way in, we'll pass some restrooms that are out of service, but actually functional. The middle of this building has four classrooms all about this size. The first large space we're going to get to see, which will take a moment, is the auto shop, which has five garage doors and two lifts. The next big space is the wood shop. Although most of the tools have been removed, the dust collection and other infrastructure is still there. At this corner of the building is the paint room. It's hard to see, but this whole room has ventilation in the floor for pulling fumes down and its own roll-up door for pulling vehicles in. Now we'll go through a couple more of those classrooms in the middle of the building I mentioned earlier. It's likely that one of these rooms will get turned into a high-tech fabrication shop and the other one into a machining shop. And that leads us to the welding shop. On the left side we have electrical welding and on the right side gas. Each of these eight bays has its own ventilation and its own plumbed oxygen and acetylene lines. And that brings us to the rest of the welding shop, which we could outfit for larger welding projects, including vehicles. Because, like all the others, this one has its own roll-up door. We didn't quite go far enough, but hiding back in one of these hallways is also a dark room.
That brings us to the end of the first installment of our video tour. Most of what you've seen in this video will be part of our first few months of operations, providing residence and functional space to our founding members. This will give us a comfortably large base of operations to grow the membership while also bringing the rest of the buildings online. Look out for my next video if you want to see some of those buildings that would be part of our second wave of functional spaces once we put in some TLC and elbow grease. Thanks for coming along on the tour. Feel free to visit our website if you want to know more at codewell.org.